Hello, my name's Ryan Clements, and today I thought I'd do a video about any legal matter that springs to mind rather than the usual animation. So, what springs to mind? Bullying. How about that? Now, where does that come to mind? It's not as though it's topical or it's been in the news recently. So, let's talk about that. Um, in a staff handbook, you'd normally see bullying and harassment. They are similar, not necessarily the same. When we employment lawyers talk about harassment, we're talking about actions that fall under the Equality Act. Bullying is separate. Bullying has no standalone action. So if you feel like you've been bullied at work or you feel you have been bullied at work, you can go to the Employment Tribunal, but you can't go to the Employment Tribunal simply saying you've been bullied. You have to probably resign and claim constructive dismissal. But many people don't do that because they don't have the two years requisite period. If you go to the Employment Tribunal and say that you're claiming constructive dismissal and you resign because you've been bullied, you're looking for a case of unfair dismissal. That's what it comes under, the Employment Rights Act 1996. But today we're going to focus um, solely on bullying. Now, it's probably not the wisest thing for the um, alleged perpetrator to say, or the alleged bully to say, um, the threshold for bullying is too low. That's not good business. It's really not. It's for the person who feels they've been bullied to say why they've been bullied. Now, where I see there's a problem is similar to harassment, where um, one person's harassment is another person's banter. It's for the bullied person to say how they feel. And one can look and see whether the action in question could amount to bullying. So two people may face exactly the same comments, be experienced the same action. One feels bullied, one doesn't. But the difference here is this. Some people react in different ways, and we know some people would react in different ways. So, for example, at work, we can talk to someone, we can say something to someone, we know they would not be offended or they would not be hurt by it, or they may come back with... Um, uh, comments that are equally as strong. And we know some people who will be affected in a different way. So we have to tailor what we say and how we treat people differently according to the person um, who's going to be at the end of what we've got to say or do. So it's really not for other people to simply say, well, that's not bullying, is it? I wouldn't feel bullied. In fact, it's irrelevant whether you feel bullied or not. Is whether that person... Um, in, in, in their situation, their personality, their character will feel bullied. So that's one thing to bear in mind. It's a similar thing like the harassment, and harassment under, under the Equality Act. What's unwanted conduct for one person may not be unwanted contact for another. Fine. Fair enough. <laughs> Now, a few weeks ago, I was at Anfield for the crunch match, uh, Liverpool versus Arsenal. If Arsenal avoided defeat, I believe that Arsenal was going to go on to win the Premier League. I was wrong about that. It seemed like Man City will win it. Anyway, we'll see. If Liverpool avoided defeat, I believe Liverpool can go on, maybe go on to get into the top four position to get into the Champions League next season. Now, the week before that, Mo Salah had taken a penalty at Bournemouth. He had taken 20 penalties previously to that, 18 penalties had 18 had been scored and two had been saved. That means he'd always hit the target. Mo never misses the target. Takes the penalty at Bournemouth, he misses the target. The following week, we got a penalty at Arsenal. Liverpool were 2 0 down. Uh, I say we, I should say Liverpool. I'm unbiased. Of course I am. Right, so Liverpool were 2 0 down. Mo scores a goal in the first half, making it 2 1. Penalties awarded to Liverpool in the second half. Mo's facing the cop. Mo's got to score, surely. He's, he will definitely hit the target. He was not going to miss the target like he did the week before. I was certain that if Mo had scored, Liverpool would have gone on to win the match because Bobby Firmino was going to definitely come on and Bobby always scores when you pass the ball to him. We know that. Anyway, Mo takes a penalty. <laughs> He misses. But what was interesting about that is that the cop, the Liverpool fans, they cheered Mo's name so loudly as though he has just scored a hat trick. And of course, the next week, Mo went on to score the most goals with left foot. Yes, in the Premier League. Believe it or not, someone actually counted and researched that to see if people score goals with their left foot, right foot, or with their head. And Mo has scored the most goals in the Premier League. Um, with his left foot. But the point is, is how the fans reacted. They encouraged him. They didn't go 
you know, and booed him or anything like that. And it responded appropriately. Maybe people do, even though you're a high played, paid and um, sports person, you still need encouragement to perform the best that you can perform. It's not simply the case of putting someone down, thinking, actually, if I put someone down and tell them effectively they're useless, they would react positively. Think about that. It's a school grade bully. Um, and that's what it is. I mean, there's certain people who are just sensitive to the comments of others and some people who can easily become unhinged.